Our unique features about this ride is our vertical lift. Our vertical lift is about 70 feet tall with the snake statue being 80 feet tall. Um, it's designed to look like a crane. Um, so once you get into the cart, you're lifted up on our elevator platform and then you start the track from the top. It's supposed to resemble um, a crew going up a crane and then placing the head of the statue back on there. And that is King Venomous. And once you place the head back on the statue, it unleashes the Cobra's Curse. Um, the track itself is about 2,165 feet long and it is, has uh, 13 designated blocks. All of the coasters here at Bush in Bush Gardens um, are on a block system. Um, so the track is separated into what we call blocks and those are sections of the track that only one train can occupy at a time and that is designed for safety so no tr two trains can occupy the same block um, so they don't obviously crash into each other um, or get too close to each other. And we're going to move on to um, our midway point over here on the track. So I'm going to have to shout in this area because it's a little bit loud, um, but this is our midway point on our track here. This is what we call block break. Um, it's a little plateau um, and this is actually where the trains spin backwards. So you'll see this one come through. Um, and it stays locked in a forward position until it reaches the end of this block right here, and then it'll start to turn backwards. Um, and once it turns backwards, it'll stay locked backwards until it reaches um, the top of our second lift over here. This second lift is about 40 feet tall, um, and what makes it a little bit more unique than a traditional coaster, a traditional coaster will use a chain pulley system um, in order to pull the cart all the way up. Um, this lift here uses small rotating tires, actually, that, that we call kicker tires. Um, to bring it all the way up to the top here in a uh, backwards position. Um, and then once it reaches the top up there, um, it'll unlock and then it'll start to spin. Um, and uh, it's going to be a free spin, so we don't actually control it. Um, the more weight that you put into the front of the cart, the more it will spin. Um, so if you don't want it to spin too much, then sit in the back. <laughs> and if you want it to spin more, then sit in the front. Like I said, it is about 70 feet tall, and those stairs are a pain in the butt. <laughs> wow. all of the coasters are designed in a block system is in case the ride were to shut down. If the ride were to shut down um, itself or we had to shut it down um, while people are still on it, um, then all of the trains are going to stop at the next uh, automatic block. So you're going to stop at a certain point where we can get you off safely if we have to manually get you off. All right, we're going to go into the maintenance bar now. So... You guys are welcome in here. Um, this is where we store all of the trains for the night and then this is also where they bring them in in order to inspect them and or fix them. Um, after about 50,000 cycles on the track, each train will be pulled off, completely disassembled. Um, all of the parts will be inspected. Um, renewed if they need to be fixed or if they need to order new parts um, and then they're going to completely assemble it all back together and then they do about 12 hours of test runs six for maintenance and six for operations um, so we usually say after the park closes whenever a train is ready and we'll do either three hours two nights or do six hours all in one night um, this is what train number is this? So this is one of our pump trains. Um, we have three different ways we can manually open um, all of the lap bars here at Cobra's Curse. 
one of the most popular ways um, that all of the rides are going to have and what works the best for us is a battery pack. It takes about 24 volts of electricity in order for your lap bar to come up. Um, obviously, there's no electricity on the ride, so there's absolutely no way your lap bar could come up during the ride. Um, but let's say we had to get you off manually, we would just take that battery pack and then plug it into the back of these little ports on the back of each train right here. Um, and then with a little dial, we can open all of the seats one by one. Um, another way that we can do it here at Cobra is with a pneumatic pump system. We have these little handheld pumps out on our platform. Um, and you can see in the back of each of these trains, those little four port kind of looking things, um, those, those, those um, are where we connect the pump. And then handheld, we have to pump it until we get enough pressure. And then that is also how we release each seat. So we have four on each side, one for each of the seats on the train. Um, the last way we can open the lap bars, not all of the trains allow it. Um, usually if it's a pump train, um, then you can only do the pump and then the battery pack, but then we also have a harness release key and it is a long silver pole that we can put into the foot plate of each of these here. There's a little hole right here for it. You just put that pole in, tug it towards you, and then that will open the seats as well. Um, but if it's a harness release key train, then the pump won't work and then vice versa. Um, do you guys have any questions about the maintenance bond or any of the trains or anything? So there are two different types of release, you said. There yes. Three. But Technically three, the battery pack works universally for all the trains. Some of them are pumped, so the pump will only work for those. Some of them are harness release. The harness, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just depends. Most of them are pumped and they want to make all of them pump. So we only have one train that actually works with the harness release key right now. Um, and we have eight trains here. We currently have four on the track, which is the minimum number we can have. Um, and then our maximum is usually six. Um, usually if we try to run more than six, then the ride gets a little irritated with us. So, all right. And for this ride, you don't have to worry about scratches or... Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's already on there. Designed that way. It's printed on there. So our control panel um, will automatically count every dispatch and it'll count the dispatches for the hour. That's a good question actually, um, because we do have to calculate our hourly total, how many people we push through within the hour, hour and then we have to uh, relay that to communications um, so then they can keep track of our data and that's how we uh, predict our annual budget for each day throughout the year. Yeah. So does the system know like train one is on the track? Yep. Yes, so each train is numbered one through eight. Um, we don't have a train, or one through nine, we don't have a train six, which is kind of weird. But um, uh, they each have their own little designated tag um, that the track will recognize and then the control panel will recognize so they can tell what coaster is where, how fast it's going, how many dispatches it's had, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. All right. All right, we're going to move on. Here on the wall, these are our harness release keys. So this is what this long pole looks like. All right. I'll hold this open for y'all. Y'all can just step out there really quickly. So this is our platform. What makes Cobra's Curse a little bit more unique than the rest of the park is unlike all the other coasters, we are not a dispatch coaster. We have a continuously moving platform. Um, so it continuously moves. Each train will just automatically come in and continue along the track here. People will load. Um, and then how we actually dispatch the train is um, everybody will get into their seat. They'll pull their lap bars down. And then we have an ambassador on either side to check the load side and the unload side. Once they have secured everybody's lap bar, then they're going to take these yellow, little yellow squares that you can see in their hand those are called RFIs or radio frequency identifiers. Um, so once they're done checking all the lap bars, um, they're going to go ahead and they're going to tag the back of that train with that little yellow block. Um, and that's going to register up here um, on the ceiling. These are their lights up here. So the red is for the unload side. The green is for the load side. Once it turns solid, um, then the train will go ahead and dispatch itself. If for any reason the lap bar is not secured, um, or let's say somebody wants to get off and they have not tagged yet, um, then the train will just automatically stop in the station. If your lap bar is up, 
don't worry, it's not going to go without you. Yeah. All right. Standing by. Cooper's curse is experiencing a brief delay in the station. We'll have your ride moving momentarily. We just thank you for your patience. happened is what we call a misalignment because our coasters spin um, they are supposed to automatically realign themselves once they get into the station right over here or our transfer track um, if that does not happen um, that is what we call a misalignment um, the ride will automatically stop itself all of the coasters will continue along the track until they all stack into the nearest block um, we do have to call maintenance for that and then we would call it down into our managers um, a code that we call a B1M, that is a maintenance-related mechanical problem, misalignment. If it were a B1E, it would be a maintenance-related electrical problem. Um, however, yeah, it was just a misalignment. And then you guys got to see our transfer track, which is also what we use for our ADA. Um, maintenance guy, is there always somebody in maintenance available for any ride? Yeah, so there is a morning crew and then there's a night crew. So the morning crew comes in around 4 o'clock in the morning and they stay here until 2.30. Um, they're the ones who prep the ride, get it up and running. Maintenance does have to do their own test runs um, every single morning before they hand it off to operations. Um, once they hand it off, off to us, they'll stay here, like I said, until around 2.30 until the other crew comes in and then they're here until maybe like two o'clock in the morning. Somebody's always on call. Somebody is always here on call, correct. Yeah, they might not be always in the maintenance farm, but they're always around the park somewhere and we just get a hold of them through the radio. So yeah, all right. So now we're gonna move on to the control panel finally. So our control panel is a little small, so I'm gonna have to take about half the group um, at a time, if that's okay. So welcome into our control panel. Like I said before, because we are a little bit different, we are not a traditional dispatch coaster. Um, so the control panel operator's main responsibilities are going to be to overwatch and supervise the station, um, look out for any anomalies or anything like that. And they're also going to keep track of all of the seats here on the screen. So once the train comes into position, it'll register here on the control panel, and then it'll tell us what seats are good and what seats are not. Once it is down and secure, it'll turn green like that. Um, if it were to be up, it's just going to remain gray. Um, and then once they tag, these boxes up here will light up green, and that is the control panel's way of knowing to dispatch the train. Um, we can also keep track of our ADA over out here on this side. Our ADA, um, they have a, their own little special control panel over there, Grouper does, and what they're going to do is they're going to use one of those little RFIs. They're going to put it down onto their panel, and they're going to request an ADA train. Um, and then this blue button is going to light up here, and once she presses that blue button, it'll acknowledge it, and then the next train to come into the transfer track will just automatically move over to ADA. They'll load them that way, um, and then they're going to send it back out. They can send it back out as an ADA train, so once it completes a cycle, it'll just automatically come back into the ADA station, or they can send it as a normal train, sending it back out on the track in order to continue its normal routine. Um, we also have all of our uh, cameras up here that are pointed at all of our blocks. So if the trains were to stop onto the track for any reason, we can see where they are. Um, we also have our spiel system and our um, soundtrack over here. So we can speak to everybody out onto the track with this right over here. And then we can also play some automated spiels. Um, we have some for weather, technical difficulties, loose articles. We can also decide what block or what section of the ride it's going to play at. We can also control all of our lights, our volume, and then our soundtrack as well. 
Um, this is also where we control our wait time up here. So we can either go up or down. And then once we hit enter, it's going to automatically change um, the sign downstairs. So this ride is a little bit more difficult because we actually can't see our queue house. We have to periodically go into the queue house and check the, the line every once in a while. Um, it's not as convenient as other rides like Cheetah or Iron Gwazi who can see their line from their control panel and can just kind of adjust it that way. But we, unfortunately, we do have to go down there, check it, come back up. Um, and then we have a pretty good idea of the estimate of, OK, the line is ending here. OK, it's going to be this time. Um, but since now we only have three trains on, we're going to add about five to ten minutes to whatever we think the wait time is, only because we're now pushing through less people an hour. Um, if we were to go out onto the track for any reason, that would be entering a ride restricted area. And in order to do that, we have to lock what we call locking out. So we would press the emergency stop button, that big red button right over there. Um, and that's going to shut the power off to the entire ride. So all of the trains will stop wherever they are. Um, and we cannot go back up until a mechanic resets it. So we're going to press that button. We're going to put the latch over it. And then we are going to use, excuse me, sorry. I probably should have kept it out. We are going to use what we call a ride disabled device. So this is our ride disabled device hasp. We would go ahead and we would latch that onto the latch over there. Sorry. Um, and then everybody who's planning on going out into the track would get their own lock and key. They're going to put this through the hole right here. They're going to lock it, and then they're going to bring the key with them. They're responsible for their key, and they're the only ones responsible for their key. So nobody can lock out for them. Nobody can lock back in for them. Um, and that is just a safety measure that we have. Um, just in case the mechanics were up here ready to restart the ride, they cannot physically do so until we take those locks off and we can reset the ride. So yeah. Do you guys have any other questions? It is, it's a little bit stressful. It really depends on the day. Um, I personally am someone who likes, you know, coming to work and having something different to do every single day. Um, so, like specifically today, I'm giving you guys a tour, you know? Um, I don't do this every day, which is fun. Um, it's fun not knowing what you're going to do. Um, but yes, on, on certain days when it's like really, really busy, it can be running back and forth all over the place. Or on days that are really dead, I'm really just looking for something to do. So. Yeah, that's how we indicate down there. Um, if a seat isn't good, she's going to indicate what side it is. She's going to use this hand or that hand, and she's going to signal what seat it is. So one, two, three, or four. Um, and then until, give a thumbs down, and until they're good, she's going to give a thumbs up. That yellow button right there on the control panel is our station stop button as well. So if we needed to stop the station from moving at any point, um, so whether it be um, somebody's crying, doesn't want to ride, somebody has, um, it's sometimes the elderly have a problem moving on the walking platform, anything like that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to station stop it. Um, so the ride doesn't automatically stop. It's not like the e-stop or anything. Um, the trains will continue on the track and everything. It'll just stop the moving platform. The platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is that yellow button what you press? Yeah. And then everybody um, on the platform also has a station stop button just in case the control panel operator doesn't see it immediately. They can go ahead and they can press it as well. All mine for all eternity.